everybody. Welcome back to Life at Sunny Lee with Kathy Jarvis. And it is the end of June, and we have been fighting different uh, pests. And the pests that we've been fighting have this month have been in the form of animals. Um, I have... I started out with a um, new bed of strawberries. And if you remember correctly, um, I had this bed completely filled with new strawberries. And this side has one strawberry left. I got a couple weeds I need to poe. And this one did okay. So what I did, I had a mow coming up from the bottom and I couldn't figure out what to do about it. So my solution was originally the old traps, which I have one up at the top of the garden, but it wasn't doing, it wasn't catching, it wasn't working right. So I bought these solar mow repellents, put one in here and put one around the other areas where the mows were. And I put a regular trap next to it. And I've had these out for about a month. And this is the, what they were. They were Sonic Mo repellent, uh, repellers, four pack. And I got them off of Amazon. They repel mows, gophers, and bows. And they're weatherproof. They're powered by the sun. And they sink into the ground. Now we've had these before, but I always had them out into this part and we ran over them with the lawnmower and destroyed them. So this year I decided to put them inside the raised beds where the mows were having problems. And that buzzing sound is what they do. Every 30 seconds they buzz and that sends out a vibration in the ground that keeps the mows away. And you'll notice there's no mows in this one anymore. The other place I had problems with the mows was up in the uh, corn area. So we'll go up there and I'll show you that area. Now, like I said, I put all these in the beds so that we wouldn't run a chance of running over them with the lawn mower. And they've been working for about a month now. Okay. There's the other one, and it just went off. There's no mow trails here anymore. I followed the original mow trail, which was here, and put the ovation trap there. And I put that in the same day I put the um, solar one in. And as you can see, they have not been back into this tunnel at all so these things definitely work which is a plus now the other pests that we've been fighting has been raccoons and I am up to nine that I have caught and um, taken care of gotten away from the farm the problem with the raccoons is that they destroy everything they like to get in. They dug up all the corn, my second set of corn. They dug it all up. You could see their little paw prints and their little hose where they would dig down and just get the uh, corn and then go to the next one. So every six inches, there was a little hoe showing that they had been there, had dug out, and had gone on to the next one. So they're great little diggers. And as you can see, they do make a mess. This is one of the messes I have today to clean up. They have completely torn up the compost bin. Um, moved blocks around, knocked blocks off, knocked down the gate that will get in front of it. And this is just some of the damage. They've eaten up all my chicken eggs for the last week. 
and um, they've torn up the door off the chicken coop. Uh, the, not the door that gets into, but the door that covers the uh, window for the chickens. They tore it off. They tore off the egg door. I had to replace it. They've torn off the trim. They've gotten into the um, trash cans, turned them upside down. I had to pick all that up and put heavy cement blocks on top of it to keep them from getting into it. So they're really becoming a nuisance. So I don't have any choice but to trap them and get them off of the property. So that is what we were working on this past whole week. In fact, those nine that we got have been gotten within the last week and a half. And it's not just my place. Um, the neighbor has gotten four that he's taking care of and the other neighbor has gotten four or five. So they're pretty thick this year. Hopefully when the uh, cornfield across there, see that cornfield back there? Once the ears start forming on that, Hopefully they'll go and bother that corn and leave my place alone. So far they've taken all my cherries. I didn't get any cherries this year because of them. And it doesn't take five coons long to cling out a cherry tree. And um, saw it with my own eyes, so I know they do it. <laughs> and um, that's basically what we've been doing this week that and going to the gym so in cutting grass always cutting grass and weeding um, I got everything weeded and now I'm back to the strawberry patch I saw, showed you and I'll start on this end and go back again our blackberries should be coming in now this is where it's good to have a garden log I can check my garden log and know what to expect like I knew that in June to expect the mows, I mean May, to expect the mows, and June to expect the um, raccoons. So I was ready with the, uh, wasn't quite ready with the mows. I had to order the traps, the sonic things, because my other traps just weren't working right. The um, kill trap has a few disadvantages. One thing is you've got those sharp things that any animal can go under and get hurt on. They're hard to set after a while. And when they first come out of the box, they're really easy to set. But the harder your ground is, you can break off those little spikes that go down, which you have to take up and down each time. And they are a kill trap. I mean, you're killing whatever's making the tunnel. And the advantage of the solar ones is that they don't kill the animal. They just chase it away. You don't have to pull it up and push it back down. You just make your original hole. And, but don't, do, don't push, just push it down. You have to make a hole with something and then mount your dirt around it and sink it into the hole. It does have an on off button that you can turn it off when you don't need it. And they're easy to take up and store in the wintertime when you don't need them. You just put them out in the spring. Disadvantages that they do stick up if you want them in the yard. So, you know, you have to be careful not to mow over them. But if you put them in your garden beds, there's no problem. You know, if I till this, I'll have to till around it or pull it up and till and then put it back in. But with the tilled ground, it's no big deal. Just push it back in easily. So I have to admit, I like the repellent. A lot better than I do the kill. I'm really not into killing animals if I don't have to. I'd rather relocate them or chase them away. A um, couple of tips with the raccoon is problem is to um, keep the food, the animal food, sealed in metal containers with locks if they have to be outside. Make sure all your buildings are secure so they can't get into them. Um, your garden, without fencing it in, there's not much you can do. I, my garden is not fenced in, so I do have a problem with that. Um, chickens, same thing. You know, you can't um, 
can't hardly keep them out. They have a way of opening latches and getting into places that you wouldn't think they would get into I'm in the shade. It's, it's hot outside. So best thing to do is like if you have outdoor animals, stay with them while they're eating. Once they're done eating, pick up the food and bring it back in. Put your traps out. I'm using the um, Have a Heart traps. I'm not, um, not using the kill traps. And um, just do the best you can. You know, and sometimes you do have to uh, shoot the ones that are aggressive. And because there will be a few that will be mean. We had a couple the other day that were fighting at the cats. We had to get rid of. But, you know, just do the best you can. And remember that the gardening, it's fun, but it can be challenging. So don't think you're just gonna go out and throw some seeds in a raised bed and have enough uh, crops for your whole year. Because you've got animal pests, you've got insect pests, you've got fungus and diseases. All those things that you have no control over that will tr try to attack your garden at one time or another. That's where it comes in good to have a garden log. That way you can kind of look back last year and have an idea of what to work on next. Because I know in July I'm going to be working against the insects. The um, squash beetle, the squash bug, the cabbage looper, and the... Um, Japanese beetles will all be coming in. In fact, I see a white moth over there in the woods, which is laser eggs, and that's what be, uh, causes the caterpillar, or not caterpillar, but the cabbage worms. So you have to be ahead of the game a lot of the times if you're going. And last year I wasn't, and I lost all my cucumbers to squash bugs. I lost my melon patch to squash bugs. I lost all my cabbages to the cabbage loop, um, worm. So I'm doing some things this year differently. I, I put the netting over the cabbages and the broccoli, but my broccoli went to seed because of the heat. So there's always something that you're fighting in the garden. So hopefully you've learned something. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. Uh, subscribe hit the like button, share it with your friends, and I'll see you in the next video. Dream big and follow that dream. Bye, everybody.